Well, here's one that slipped under the old radar. Here's one that I didn't pick up on initially. In my defense, the 19th was my birthday. And also in my defense, there isn't really a story here. Not yet. There's no story here yet, so... It's not like I missed any breaking news here, but this was notable. And had I known that this was said back on the 19th, two days ago, I probably would have addressed it at the time at least a little bit. But, well, we're here now, right? Like, who cares about two days ago? We're in the present. I can't change the past. I can only change the future. So, we got to talk about this for a minute here. We got to at least take one video to talk about this because... Since this announcement came out, well, at first there wasn't a whole lot. Like, uh, I was streaming throughout much of my birthday, and I didn't hear too much about this. It wasn't until yesterday during the Hawk's Nest stream that I heard about this. But now that it's out there in my community, my community is starting to buzz a little bit about this one. Because even though it's just the thoughts of one man, it is from a reputable NFL reporter. Benjamin Albright. This is not just some clickbait artist. This is not NFL rumors on Twitter. This is somebody with some credibility, and he needs to tell the truth. He needs to be honest, and he needs to be he needs to be accurate in order to keep that credibility. His credibility is what keeps him afloat as a person reporting on the NFL. So when he says something, you can't totally dismiss it. And two days ago, he had this tweet here. And it wasn't a story, it was just him replying to somebody on Twitter who asked him a question. And he doesn't say he has any sources that can confirm it. He doesn't say that I know this for a fact. He, In fact, he kind of qualifies this by saying, I think. So, we don't have a story yet. But I do find it interesting that somebody who cares about credibility who needs to get things right a high percentage of the time in order to maintain his career as an NFL reporter, and doesn't really seem to have any kind of stake in this game. He's a he's a, a Broncos reporter, actually. I believe he uh, mostly works with Broncos stuff. Would come out and say this. Somebody on Twitter asked him, do you think Pete Carroll will retire? And Benjamin Albright said, kind of unprompted almost, because the conversation wasn't about this, that he thinks the GM wants somebody else at head coach and has for a while. That's uh, of substance. That is a statement that is clearly meant to get at least a little bit of attention. That is a statement that is clearly meant to be directed at particular people. Now again, he doesn't say a impasse between the two is imminent. He doesn't say that something is going to happen this offseason. But... He does say, in pretty certain terms, that he believes that the GM, John Schneider, wants Pete Carroll out and a new head coach in. They just won't publicly acknowledge that. And if this had come from some small little Twitter account with a few, couple hundred followers, of course I would ignore it. And while I don't think we should spend too much time here, because at the end of the day, even this guy isn't saying something's about to happen, I think it's worth addressing for a minute here because we we know a little bit about the relationship between Pete Carroll and John Schneider. And we can infer a little bit more of it using common sense, using our brains. You guys know. So when I saw this, I started thinking about a few things. And I, I'm wondering, maybe... Maybe something else is going to go down this offseason because last year, the Seahawks had to make the choice. It was either Pete goes or Russell goes. They chose Russell goes, and they definitely made the right decision on that one. So is it possible that this offseason they're going to have to make a decision between Pete and John? Is it possible that there could be something going on here? Now that somebody has said it, does it blow up into something bigger or does this just go away? I mean, it's not like it's Adam Schefter reporting this, right? But let's uh, try to put these pieces together here because we all know 
that when Pete Carroll took the coaching job with the Seahawks back in 2010, he also had personnel control. John Schneider came along as the GM, but it was generally understood that Pete Carroll was the one really in charge. He was going to have control of personnel decisions, final say on draft stuff, final say on free agent stuff, and he was really going to be the one in control. I've often asked in many recent videos over the last several years, it's what does John actually do here? It's hard to know. Maybe he just does paperwork, right? So that's the way that it was for a long time in Seattle. A lot of people, myself included, feel like that, that may have flipped with the most recent offseason, where Pete, still the head coach, lost his personnel control, and John Schneider picked it up. And John Schneider delivered a really, really good draft. So what do we have to prove this? Admittedly, not a whole lot. Um, I believe if you go to the official Seahawks website, Pete Carroll lost his VP title. If you go look at the uh, people who were in charge, he used to have, a, I think it was VP of personnel, and now he doesn't. But nothing was publicly announced. If you actually go to uh, Pro Football Reference, they still have, oh, my bad. They still have head coach has personnel authority listed under the uh, VP of football ops and the v executive VP slash general manager uh, categories. So as far as they're concerned, Pete Carroll, the head coach, still has personnel authority. But beyond all that, just thinking about it in terms of common sense, well, you can look at the drafts, right? Why do some people think that John Schneider ran the draft in 2022? Partially because that draft was really good and our drafts for the last several years were terrible. I'm not going to go through everything right now, but you go through these drafts. These are some these are some bad drafts. Some of them are really bad. Even the good ones are not that good. Even the good ones are pretty thin. So a lot of people infer from that that, hey, um, they're, we were drafting terribly for such a long period of time. We actually had a really good draft in 2022, therefore someone else must have been in charge, but it's more than that. There's also some element of the kind of draft we had. For Carroll's entire tenure in Seattle, he wanted offensive linemen who were run blockers, first and foremost. That's how you end up with a guy like Jermaine Effetti in the first round. That's how you end up with some of the, pros with the, uh, some of the projects that he picked up, like uh, Reese Odiambo. That's how you end up with Mark Lewinsky not becoming a long-term part of your offensive line, even though he was a good player and became a really good player after he left Seattle because he was more of a run, a pass blocker than a run blocker. What did we do in 2022? We drafted two pass blocking first offensive linemen in Cross and Lucas. If Carroll was in charge, I don't believe we would have taken Cross and Lucas. I don't know if we would have even really looked at them. I think we would have taken players like Trevor Penning, who are run blockers first and foremost. So... A lot of people infer from that that, hey, clearly somebody else was calling the shots. And if it wasn't Pete, it's probably John. So we can already see John starting to potentially make his way into the make his way into a position of higher power than he's been before, potentially. If you buy it. Again, this is we're 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 extrapolating, we're guessing here. Not everybody's gonna see these same things, but I personally, as a fan of this team, I look at it and I go, yeah, this does not feel like a Pete Carroll draft to me. Not just because it was good, but because of the kinds of players that you drafted. Cross and Lucas are not Pete Carroll players. So if there was some discussion behind closed doors, because it would have been behind closed doors last year, this is not something they would have necessarily said publicly because it's embarrassing if there was that discussion between Pete, Jody, and uh, John, and the other vested, interested parties here, and they decided, okay, Pete, you can stay as head coach, of course, you're still here, but we're going to shake things up with the way we handle personnel. There, there could definitely be some friction between the GM and the coach. Um, there are stories, many stories of John Schneider and his scouting department doing a lot of work trying to figure out the draft, trying to figure out who to take, who they wanted, who they want to select in the draft, who's better than who, ranking players, putting them up on that big board, and then Pete just rolls in there and starts messing things up on the board 
based off his gut. And over and over again, his gut proved incorrect. You've seen it. I mean, LJ Collier, a first round pick, what a disaster that is now. He literally can't get on the field. He spent a top 100 pick on Cody Barton and Marquise Blair. They both basically look like they don't belong starting in an NFL defense. Rasheem Green, third round pick, never developed into much of anything. Uh, Malik McDowell, complete whiff on that one. You completely ignored all the negative signs there were with him concerning his off the field, um, off the field character attributes, and they it bit you in the butt. So Jermaine Effetti, another really big one, by the way. <clears throat> you got to go all the way back to 2015 to find a decent draft, and even that draft was not that great. So maybe, maybe. There's a little bit of friction developing there because clearly both guys are approaching the game of football in different ways. And you saw that come out quite possibly in this most recent draft. So I don't think anything is going to come of this, but it is going to be interesting to watch because just when you think about it logically, when you have one guy making personnel decisions for a team and then another guy is coaching that team, you would think there would be problems. If one guy's building the team and the other guy's in charge of running the team that is built, how is that not going to create problems? But whenever you have one guy in charge of everything in the NFL, it usually either goes bad, or if it doesn't go bad, it only goes well for a little short period of time. So maybe we're going to have to make a bigger decision than I thought this offseason. I don't know. Maybe it will be a John or Pete decision. You can see it, right? These guys clearly think about football differently than each other. And who knows if it's going to blow up into something bigger. All right. See you guys later. Go Hawks. Just wanted to talk about it for a little bit.